Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at boundaries and borders and how and when those boundaries are formed. So let's get started. One thing to be aware of and know that boundaries and borders are something more than just what you see on a map. Uh, we grow up, the first thing, you, one of the first things you do in geography, even in this class, is you become very aware of political geography and the boundaries or borders that are established there. But it's often not talked about what those boundaries actually represent and they are three-dimensional in the sense that they go beyond just the Earth's surface um, and they go below. And so that would be considered when we get into resources and allocation of resources and territories that are going to be associated with that. When you consider the sea, it, it's something that's pretty significant. Um, and in, 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 even in, in modern the modern world, uh, airspace. So things like that become especially important when we start talking about economic resources. When we look at defining boundaries, uh, this is uh, more just a, a terminology or just uh, some term things to be aware of, but really just a quick step-by-step -step process. When we establish boundaries, you're going to define, delimit, demarcate, and administrate. And so when you define it, generally that's going to be looking at um, what are going to be the specific boundaries of a specific uh, between two states, uh, two countries, etc. Uh, but when we look at that, those boundaries are sometimes, you know, in, in history, were defined by a treaty. Other times they were specifically decide, you know, defined by latitude and longitude. To delimit boundaries would be to actually put them onto a map to define them, not just to have that definition, but to actually place them on the map to be to illustrate or formally establish those um, those borders. And then the demark to demarcate the boundaries would be to actually have something uh, in the physical landscape that you can actually see and uh, you know establish where the borders are. And, and oftentimes when this happens, um, when you actually have the physical border or boundary established, uh, this is where you start to see disputes. And, and we'll, that's something else we'll look at here uh, moving forward. And then finally is the administrate. And, and that's, again, where the administration of boundaries or borders um, it tends, to, tends to be in the area of conflict, uh, where you actually have the, the human interaction involved. When we think about boundaries, there's two ways we can look at it. One is how. And we're going to look at that with a physiographic, ethnographic. Sometimes you hear it, um, uh, the anthropomorphic uh, ways of, of defining boundaries, and geometric. The other one would be when. Um, when we look at subsequent boundaries, which we can look at consequent or superimposed boundaries, antecedent, and relic. So really what we're going to focus on here um, the next couple minutes are how and when we look at boundaries and borders. Geometric boundaries are established with straight lines. Uh, and oftentimes we look at that with long latitude and longitude, but that's not always the case. We can look at, uh, if you look at Iraq and Saudi Arabia, for example, in the northeast portion of this particular uh, map, you can see very distinct geometric boundaries. If you look at just closer to home, uh, between just go north and the northern border border of the United States and Canada for the most part is a geometric boundary on the 49th parallel. North and South Korea are just divided on the 38th parallel. So if we can look at all kinds of places around the world and look at geometric borders or boundaries, uh, the problem with geometric boundaries oftentimes becomes uh, that they are they they there's a disregard for some of the other boundaries that we might look at cultural ethnic. Uh, historical, uh, physical boundaries that might uh, create uh, other problems along the way. And as we look at this, uh, because they're not always defined, they're defined more, um, you know, on latitude, longitude, for example, they're not as distinctly marked in the cult, in the actual physical landscape. Which brings us to that idea of, of a physiographic or physical boundary. These, I think, are probably the most easy and, and, and widely recognized um, and in, in, in easiest to observe in, in some re some regards. Uh, you got to be careful because when we look at rivers, that's not always the same because they actually can move over time. If you look at boundaries that have been established based on where the Mississippi is, for example, well, those the Mississippi changes, it moves. And so those boundaries once established on specific um, place along the Mississippi, that, that can be problematic. Um, if you look at between Spain and France, the Pyrenees Mountains, uh, 
huge um, and imposing border, physical border. Um, and, and that's just some, another example that we could look at. Just another one you could take, a, for example, if you look in the, uh, on uh, the map between West Virginia and Virginia, and you look there on um, Highway 84, right where it crosses the state boundary, you can see it's very much based on the mountain, uh, physical boundaries of the mountains, as we look at uh, uh, that second image. And so just a good example of a physical boundary. Here's another one if we look at between uh, just in the United States down in, more in the south, and you can see the original, um, well, you can see where the Mississippi River is, but you can see where the border was established and how over time the Mississippi River has changed its course. It's, it's not in the same place as it was before. Uh, and yet, if you look at the boundary, well, it's a little bit um, different. The next one we can look at is the anthropomorphic anthropographic, ethnographic, or cultural boundaries. And, and I know there's three terms, but you might see those interchangeably. And so I'm not sure what you might see on an AP exam, but you must consider all of them. Essentially, they're all referring to the same human characteristics or things that we've discussed up to this point. Um, it could be religion, language, ethnic background, things that are more definable areas, but they're loosely drawn boundaries that you, know, you might look by concentration. And, and what you just finished with the case study in Yugoslavia is a perfect example of this, that we can look at uh, those ethnographic boundaries um, where particular ethnicities lived and use it as a, a, a general idea of, for future boundaries. And another example of this, um, if we take Sudan, and most recently there was a uh, you know, South Sudan cre uh, voted and, and created an independent state from the the bigger state, and you can see within um, how that division was determined. Uh, if you look at Christianity and animism, and you know the traditional um, uh, boundaries of or ethnographic boundaries of Islam. Another historical example would be Ireland and Northern Ireland, and what determined. And the those boundaries. If we look at predominantly, Iron, Ireland is is a Catholic state um, in terms of what religion is practiced. But in Northern Ireland, you have that it's the portion of the, of the state that would or the nation that is um, Protestant, and we see that's where we ended up having uh, our drawn boundaries. That brings us to the when, and we can look at. Um, the types or when boundaries are drawn and and really three distinct categories you might actually see this as a fourth but subsequent boundaries are formed um, really when we look at uh, you know as events or things um, occur interactions between people the boundaries be become determined um, based on those needs consequent boundaries are usually something where we have a, a conflict and and the ones we looked at in Ireland and Northern Ireland just a second ago would be a good example um, and it defines you know boundaries between uh, particular groups of people. Oftentimes this is good because it, it represents a recognition of differences that it's di that there's a, a reasoned um, placement of these boundaries b based on some significant um, difference. When we get to superimposed boundaries sometimes that can become uh, complicated because it's oftentimes or historically has been based on in a, a colonial or a foreign um, occupying force or influencing the, where these boundaries are, are being established. And that would be a great example that would be in Africa uh, as we look at the Berlin Conference uh, or if you looked at North and South Korea, a uh, superimposed boundary at the 38th parallel was really something that was just established as a, as a part of the Cold War conflict. Um, generally speaking, these can be bad and, and often lead to more conflict. Another one is an antecedent, uh, where boundaries are, are determined before people are actually there. And so they're uh, maybe on, on an agreement that, you know, that there's, if we look at the United States and the 49th parallel, uh, when we had early um, treaties in the Treaty of Paris and, and the United States and, and the British, um, it was determined that the boundary would be the 49th parallel. Uh, and, you know, this was before the, the West had fully been uh, settled and really explored and, 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 and the United States had even de defined itself 
as the formal continental United States that we know today. The last one is a relic boundary, and this is something that might have a historical significance. Uh, you look at the picture here, this is a Checkpoint Charlie. This was the, the, the dividing um, border between uh, East and West Berlin. And you know, we look at that as a, a Cold War uh, relic boundary. It once had incredibly significant meaning during the Cold War and greatly influenced the, the cultural landscape when we look at the Berlin Wall, um, but now it's it doesn't have the same significance. However, you can still see if you, when you cross over from west to east of Berlin or vice versa, the, the cultural landscape is still still reflects that to some extent um, from the Cold War architecture of this of the of uh, East Germany and West Germany, and uh, in the, in the, in the sort of the influence of the East and the West. So. Keep in mind the how and when borders are determined. Our next video will focus on the kind of disputes that arise because of borders.